So this is a pretty uh, big and important day for us. It's the culmination of probably three, nearly four years. Uh, this is the day that we're gonna go out and visit the potential first site for the seaweed platform. Uh, we're gonna go and visit the baby seaweeds that have been planted here to test if they can grow and if, if there's enough nutrients in the water to, to let them grow really quickly. Uh, Brian Van Herzen's come out from Massachusetts to be here. We've got uh, University of Tasmania about to take their boat out and have a look. So. Uh, this is a special moment. It's been a long time to get here and this feels like the really the beginning of something that could turn into um, Quite an extraordinary solution that could have benefits for the whole planet. So um, this is it This is the moment it begins and uh, let's see where it goes So um, can, can you just explain we're obviously at the fish pen here But where is the seaweed line here and can you just explain what the test is that you're doing here? So at this site, it's the seaweed's running off this buoy, so we descend down this buoy when we dive and the seaweed kind of runs that direction, so right in amongst all these pens. Yeah. And this site is really seeing how uh, the co-location of our giant kelp yeah. with the salmon, so how the salmon kind of help the giant kelp okay. in, this, in this area. And the other reason we work here is because uh, Hewan, the salmon company, has such, as you can see, marvellous offshore infrastructure and they have the skills to really do that. And so we can piggyback off that infrastructure yeah. um, and it, you know, it saves us having to deploy our own. So Tassie's a global warming hotspot. Tassie's warming about four times faster than the global average. So there's a lot of attention globally on how we're responding in Tasmania to climate change and what type of industries and science and research is happening here because in many ways we're a window into the future. What's happening here now is what's going to happen uh, elsewhere around the world in you know, several decades time. So there's a lot of attention and focus on Tassie at the moment and you know, how we respond to this, this biggest challenge of our generation. So, uh, Kane, can you just tell us where we are here? Because you're saying this is an Aboriginal corporation and this is part of the restoration project, which is also part of what we're doing. Can you just explain what's happening here? So this is Trumpeter Bay. So this is quite near the fish pen location. Uh, but this is adjacent to land that's run by the Weedapuna Aboriginal Corporation, which is a local Indigenous Tasmanian uh, community. And they reached out to us and they said, look, this site used to have a lot of kelp. You know, obviously they have thousands of years of knowledge of this specific area. Yeah. And that community knowledge and that traditional knowledge, they've seen the kelp degrade and decline over time. And it has really strong cultural values, obviously. Um, not only for the type of animals that live in the kelp forest that they can eat for food, like lobsters and abalone, um, but also, you know, there's certain shells that have a really high cultural value in there that they collect and they make jewelry out of, and you know, really incredible, incredibly amazing stuff. So they reached out to us and said, look, could you help us restore one of these patches. Can you help us, can we work together to restore some sea country? Right. Uh, so this is one of the sites we're working to replant our giant kelp and ideally our super kelp, those ones that we've selected in the lab to be more tolerant of warm water. Yep. Uh, so hopefully we give them a bit more of a fighting chance and, and kind of buy a bit of time uh, and, and allay some of those problems that cause the decline of giant kelp in the first place. And what do you think is the, the, the best sort of long-term outcome with this in terms of um, you know, regenerating this kelp for the indigenous communities here. What's, what do you think long term that could look like? I mean, the best outcome here is that we return giant kelp to this bay. Historically, giant kelp would have been so thick here that you'd have trouble paddling a kayak in and out. But in addition to that, we really want to give something else to the community because, you know, we've heard one of the first things they said to us is you know, it's great to work together, but we know that scientists are only working on a two or three year project lifespan. And that engagement's really good, but when you leave, we want to have something, you know, there has to be a greater impact. So we're teaching them to grow the kelp themselves. So hopefully they can uh, not only start some of their own little seed patches, ideally, in the future, but also maybe grow kelp. You know, maybe they can be some of the first uh, tradition, uh, first kelp farmers in Tasmania that uh, can be local indigenous communities. Fantastic. Which would be amazing. So good. Yeah. So yeah, many so wins to see, isn't it? No, that's right. There's it's very just a few, very no positive negative. solution, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So we're here at IMAS Salamanca in Hobart and this is where we're breeding the kelp. Uh, so this is where we've set up those long-term cultures which are really the foundation for those breeding experiments moving forward and really the secret to the longevity of the project. So this ostensibly is phase one of the seaweed project and what I've learnt today is that the team here at UTS, Brian, they've taken samples from around Tasmania of the existing kelp species 
and they selected out of those species um, ones to breed to see how they can survive in different water temperatures and different conditions with different nutrients. And in here is what they call the super kelp. So this is the one they've chosen, they've chosen that they think is the most resilient and now they're testing it in different temperatures of 12 degrees or 16 degrees to see how it grows under these conditions. And I think it took a few months to get this set up right, even the lights are in exactly the right position, the water temperature to make sure that all the conditions are optimal to see how it's going to grow. And the sporophytes are the ones that we see, we saw today. So from this tiny, tiny size, they grow to you know, 30, 40 metres. The response to our request for help on the marine permaculture side of things has been amazing. With the support of 2040 and the Intrepid Foundation, we've had an enormous response from the public looking to help to regenerate this vital ecosystem while it's still alive in Tasmania. With business as usual, we could lose these kelp forests in the next one or two decades here in eastern Tasmania. And the challenge and the opportunity is to regenerate this kelp forest, regenerate the fish habitat, and ultimately regenerate fisheries here in Australia and around the world. Yeah, the response is amazing. It does certainly give us extra motivation and it's, you know, it's really encouraging and heartening to see people in the street who've responded and who've donated and it, it really it makes us want to share the research more than the normal probably and, and you know really keep people informed and so we've tried to put a lot of effort into progress updates and you know avenues for people to stay in touch with the project and really understand uh, the speed that we're working and the rigorousness and the science that goes into helping some of these things uh, come to fruition and come to reality and just the pace at which we work and some of that trial and error, you know, that's part of the excitement behind it. And if we can bring some of the community and the public along with us on that journey, uh, the feedback so far has been really positive. So. Yeah, so I guess for me it's a little surreal to be here because you sort of, you make a film and you hope that it, it, it resonates and then we were able to set up with Intrepid off the back the, the crowdfunding platform and to see the fruition of that and people's um, commitment and um, pledges and their own efforts to make a difference, to see it realised now, to be actually out here, to see the seaweed lines tied and the tiny um, seaweed start to grow. It's, yeah, I've had a couple of moments of reflection of, of how special this is and, and how grateful I feel to all our community and everyone that's helped this happen and to Brian for being here as well, that I do feel that this is a really exciting journey and it's just, it's, it's wonderful to be at the very start of it.